Hi, I'm Dr. Elizabeth Murray. I am a pediatrician and a pediatric emergency medicine doctor in Rochester, New York at the Galisano Children's Hospital. I've also been a spokesperson for the Academy since I think about 2014, and I'm really excited that I've newly been elected to the executive committee of the Council on Communications and the Media. And I must say, I am a little overwhelmed by all the amazing work that that committee has done in years past, you know, especially when you think of the stuff that was released at NCE last year. And so I'm very excited to get started. One area that I would like to focus on is helping everybody actually work with the media. There is a wonderful toolkit available on the COCM website, but there's also a couple of things that I realized over the years, uh, I could have done that better, or I wish I had thought about that a little bit more ahead of time. So I'm going to take a few moments, just go through three quick categories of stuff that hopefully will help you get started and kind of those tricky things that I didn't perhaps navigate so well back when I started. So in a nutshell, the three things are what I call rules of engagement, the yes and category, and then what do you want to look like? What are you going to wear when you're out there when that media call comes? So rules of engagement, what do I mean by that? What I mean is that you need to know what you as a person you as your practice if you're in private practice, and then, or perhaps you as an institution if you are a salaried employed uh, physician in an academic or a larger center, what everybody wants to do when that media call comes. I think we all can agree that now, perhaps more than ever, being able to get a clear, concise, accurate, factual a bullet of information out to the public is so important, and that's why we want to always make sure that we're available to help when the media needs our help to clarify questions. But we want to make sure we're doing it in a way that um, engages all the right parties and does so in a way that's respectful for everybody. So when I first started out, it was right at the time where Twitter was really coming up. And so in my institution, they were just learning about it. I was just learning about it. And what nobody, I think, had planned for is how quick and easy it was for members of the press to reach out to me or anybody uh, individually. So what would happen is the media would reach out to me. And I'd say, sure, I can do that. And then I'd say, oh, let me just tell the PR team uh, that I'm going to do this. And they'd say, oh, but our decision was for that topic, we're going to only have this physician do it, so we can't really put you out there. And then it was kind of an awkward situation. So I should have gotten in front of that, and I should have worked with the team a little bit. And so if you are a part of an institution, or you know, if you're part of a practice as well, meet with your colleagues and say, how do we want to handle this? Are we going to only have one person cover certain topics? Or are we going to take the approach that maybe it's a stronger message if we have a pediatric neurologist and a general pediatrician and a PZD doctor all talking about how wonderful vaccines are versus just only having that peds ID doctor talking about vaccines because the public will say, of course, a peds ID doctor loves vaccines. So decide how you want to handle that and you know, let the public relations team at your institution know that I'm here, I, I'd be interested in helping, and you know, this is my areas of expertise. Please let me know how I can help you. Also remind them, too, that, you know, boy, if there's stuff that's coming up in our local government that has to do with kids, if we want to make sure we give our legislators, legislators ac accurate information, come to me and I can help you as a resource. I can't tell you how valuable that is for politicians to be able to have a pediatrician that they can reach out to to ask questions. Um, we know we're all in it to hopefully put kids first. And so you can be a great resource, even if you're not in front of the cameras, you can be a great resource helping the media in other ways. So rules of engagement, what's it going to look like? Also, if you do say yes to that phone call, rules of engagement as far as what is the actual media experience going to be? Are you going to do a live shot? Probably not at first. Um, it's probably going to be a recorded segment. And, and what does that really mean? Are you going to go to the station? Is the crew going to come to you at the hospital? Um, how long is it going to be? Hands down, one thing that I still have to remind myself for these recorded segments is just that. They're being recorded. You can stop and you can do it again. It's so easy to kind of get caught up in, I got to say it just right, I got to say it just right. No, you don't. You can always stop and you can do it again. The reporter won't be upset. They want that great sound bite from you. And so if you don't feel like you gave them a great sound bite, do it again. That's totally fine. Reporters will often say, is there anything else you want to say or add at the end of their interview? And you can say, yes, I want to say this again. And that's totally fine. Don't get caught up in the, I got to get it right the first time. You absolutely do not. You got to get it right so you're comfortable with it because it's you being put out there on the TV or in the media print. So all those rules of engagement too, figuring out uh, what kind of questions they're going to ask you or, and do you have any strong feelings on the topic, that's also appropriate too. You can say, you know, 
I'm going to stand by the guidelines of the AAP and I'm going to you know, stand by what I know to be true with regards to the science. I don't want to get into these other topics that really are off point. We're going to, what I'm going to focus on, I'm going to give you information. And I think too, especially when cases come up of perhaps there's a child with meningitis in your community, media often want to know more about it. Be very clear. I'm not going to speak about the specifics of this child. I don't know anything about this case. We're not going to talk about the specifics of what a family might be experiencing right now. I'm going to give you some general tips and guidelines how to keep your child healthy and how you can help your family. All right, so moving on. The second thing I say, yes and. And what I mean by that is that it's going to be really tempting if you're nervous, if you don't want to do this, to say, oh, no, I can't, I can't do that. I can't do that interview. No, say yes, and it's okay. Even if you haven't read the article yet, if you need some time to prepare, you can actually get yourself ready very quick. Um, most of the topics that the press is going to want to hear about are already covered in healthychildren.org, or, or there are things you actually probably know a lot more about than you're willing to give yourself credit. So always say yes unless there's some reason you really can't do it, um, and you'll be able to give yourself enough time to prepare. So say yes, and. So my yes, ands, I have four of them. It's yes, and. I have this extra information for you. Always go to an interview with a printed out sheet of some talking points or some bullet points that give some clear extra facts on the topic. That way the reporter will have it in his or her hand and can refer to it to make sure that when they get back to the studio and they need to fill in some stuff, they're not going to a random website. They've got your information. Time and time again, I've seen that information be made into a graphic on the screen that they are working right into their whole segment. So give them something. So here's more information for you to take with you. The second one is, and again, I learned this one the hard way. I say, you know, yes, I can help you. And do you want to talk to a family who's gone through this experience? And what I mean by that is one of my earliest stories was a safe sleep story. And the reporter then went to a family who did not believe in the sleep, safe sleep guidelines and spent the second half of the whole segment talking about how she had co-slept with all of her children and it was fine and it worked for her and then the story ended. So the last message was, co-sleeping was great for my family, it'll be great for you too. So what I've done is I've kind of taken some time and think, thought, boy, what families do I know, whether they're friends or um, patients, families that I know are just great and really passionate about various subjects that I can say, and of course I ask the families first, I can say, you know, if I get a media request for this topic, are you somebody who'd be willing to talk to the family? This has been really important for co-sleeping. It's been really important for vaccines, and the press love it because, again, you're, you're not doing their whole story for them, but you're doing a lot to really help them. They want to put the best information out there, but they also don't necessarily have the expertise. You know, a lot of communities don't have a dedicated medical reporter anymore. They have people that are kind of rotating through. Um, they're very young. I remember my last Safe Sleep story, the reporter, he was in his early 20s, and he said, Doc, I'm not going to lie to you. I had to look up what these crib bumpers are. I didn't know what you were talking about. So they would like our help. And again, our goal, I am the prize here, is getting clear, concise, accurate information out to the community. So keep in mind a little list of some families that might be helpful uh, for some of the common topics. Or if you hear a big buzz story coming up, kind of think like, hmm, who could maybe help me with that? I'll tell you a little secret. Families I've used a couple times have been uh, some of our pediatric emergency medicine doctors that are appearing not as a doctor, but they're appearing as a mom of a child with a peanut allergy or a mom of two young kids who's trying to navigate how to put all those car seats in her car. What was great about that is they already have that built-in knowledge. They're very much acting as a mom. They're not comfortable talking as a doctor because they get nervous about it, but they're totally comfortable talking as a mom because they're living it every day. So those were great people to give to the press because I knew they would give a great message um, and they had a great story to tell. So that was great and the media was really excited to have that person available to them to help complete that great story and package for them. All right, and so also at the end, again, I mentioned they often say, do you have anything else you'd like to say? And I'd say yes. More information is always available on healthychildren.org. So the AAP family website is a great resource for everybody. A lot of times you'll see if you mention a website, the media will put that website as a link on their web page when they post the actual story. So again, you're controlling the message. You're getting great information out there and more resources. Plus, we want every family to know about healthychildren.org. It's a great resource for any topic. So here's more information for you to have later on. And then I also say, but my last one is, yes, I will help you, and here's some great pictures or other info for your story at. So we've all seen the story about 
asthma, and the picture is a kid using the inhaler wrong, or a safe sleep, and the baby is in a crib covered in blankets. So where do they get all these bad pictures? Well, a lot of times they just don't know. They say, oh, it's a cute kid, let's use it instead. But if again, if we can give them good resources, they'll use better information. So I know I've done some good safe sleep studies where they've gotten some good background footage of safe cribs. And I'll say, hey, back in December, Rebecca did a story and she had some great background footage. You can go back and use that for your story now. Or the Baby Safe Sleep Coalition website, they have said anybody can use any of their pictures or videos from the website in their stories. So again, we're giving them access to great information to make sure that everything is packaged together nicely. All right, last, what to wear. You know, yes, we want to say, oh, we're not being superficial. We don't care how we look. It's our message that's important. The reality is people want to be able to relate to you. You want to look friendly. You want to be professional. And how you appear is important. So there's some simple things. It's all about jewel tones. So today I have my kind of teal jacket on and I have a black shirt on underneath. It's simple, it's bright. The jewel tone families, emerald green, sapphire blue, ruby red, those colors are all nice and bright and they appear well on television. Guys, for you, solid color ties, uh, simple fine pattern jackets. We want to stay away from zigzags, small stripes, herringbone patterns, all that kind of stuff. Even with the high def TV can be a little a little overwhelming. You can make your decision or not if you want to wear a white coat instead. In general, I say if you're new to this and you're not sure what the setup is going to be like, having some type of coat, whether it's a blazer or your white coat, is really helpful because if they're going to clip the mic onto you, you want to make sure you have a place where the mic can go very easily instead of flopping on a dress collar or some something that just it won't support it very well. You can certainly do big jewelry. I was on TV this morning. I had a, a necklace on. I just Happened to take it off when I got over to my office, but um, wear what you'd like. Except for earrings, they can kind of dangle too much and you get hit in the face and it's distracting. Don't do that. Um, and then makeup, you're going to wear more makeup than you'd ever expect uh, normal or possible and feel like you need to wash your face right away. Again, you're not expected to be the news anchor of the hour, but simple things like wearing a nice, solid, a little bit brighter color lipstick than you normally would, having some under eye concealer and a lot of mascara on can be very helpful. You want to look healthy, you want to look um, engaged, you want to be interested, you want to have a nice bright smile. These are all important things so that, again, you catch the person's eye, you look like you are um, full of authority and knowledge. And again, we're not saying that appearances are everything, but you'll be amazed at how different you'll look on TV um, with the lighting being different. It's just, it's a shocking experience. You want to look healthy. You want to look approachable. You want to look like a friendly person that anybody would trust and believe. You know, just by the sheer fact of you being on television, you're going to be considered a person of authority. And that's great because you're a pediatrician and you care about kids and you're getting good info out there. But um, doing those simple things will really kind of be eye-catching and people will remember how you looked and remember what you say. So, whew, that was a whirlwind of info. Again, some of those things I wish I had thought of uh, before. I had the experiences that made me now ingrain those things in my memory. I hope it helped you. I'm really looking forward uh, for the next few years working more closely with the COCM. And if there's anything I can do to help anybody, my email is in the files. Good luck. Remember, say yes. You're going to be awesome. You can do this. Let's put kids first. Take care.